G'day Art Snackers, my name is James of James Luke Burke Creative and welcome to another Art Snacks Box freestyle video where we take the supplies from the winter 2023 Art Snacks Box, experiment with them to within an inch of their lives and then hopefully, fingers crossed, create a masterpiece for the hashtag Art Snacks Challenge. It's been a while since I've come at you with one of these fun facts and today it's not so much a fun fact as it is a first for me. You'll see in this video I got right to the end, my cat is in the Christmas tree, just ignore that. I got right to the end of my uh, video and I completely forgot to use one of the supplies in the Art Snacks box. This has literally never happened before. See if you can guess which one it is, it is the Derwent paint pen. Actually it does feature on the final piece, I did use it to put my signature in the bottom corner so all is well in the Art Snacks Challenge, but I completely forgot. You'll see that all happen right now. Let's get into the box. Here is the Art Snacks Winter 2023 box. Here's everything inside. Let's unwrap it all and take a closer look at what we'll be playing with today. First up, we have the Hanemula watercolor book. It is an A6 landscape book filled with 30 sheets of fine grain, lightly textured paper, 200 GSM weight, can handle all types of wet media. We have a set of six Faber-Castell Gold Faber Aqua Dual markers. This is a new product and this is the Candy Shop colorway. We have a bottle of Dr. P.H. Martin's Radiant Concentrated Watercolor, and this is the color 53D Iris Blue. We have a set of six Faber-Castell Albrecht Dura watercolor pencils. This is a staff favorite at Art Snacks, as well as a Treckle Mids Desert Blaze synthetic brush. This is new to Art Snacks and it is a round size four, as well as a Derwent paint pen in the color, what did I put down here? Cranberry. <laughs> It's a cranberry color Derwent paint pen. Let's get every, oh, we have the snack and the sticker as well. Let's get it all set up and get to playing. Let's start by reading some of the information on the Art Snacks menu, just so you've got all of the details about the supplies. I've got my own feelings about how I work with them and what they're doing for me, but it is also good to kind of visit some of the information that the manufacturers kind of stress as well, because we like to experiment a little bit, but I love to make sure that you know exactly exactly what these supplies are and then what we can do with them that maybe isn't so conventional. I did stay a bit more conventional with this box, I have to say. I got really carried away with the rainbow colors and just wanted to paint them all out all over my page. So the Hanemulo watercolor book, I think it's really great. It is a really travel friendly book. It says here, carry this sketchbook with you everywhere to capture your memories. Your artwork will be protected by the durable cover and secure rubber band. This book is filled with 30 sheets of fine grain, lightly textured paper on both sides so you can create with full Full width panoramic paintings, the 200 GSM weight can handle all types of wet media. It is a great travel friendly size, the A6, and it does open to a very panoramic spread. Uh, I do think it handles the water applications pretty well. You can see I've kind of put it through its paces here with a lot of wet media, a lot of uh, saturation on the page. It did kind of hold up to that. It's 200 GSM, it's not super thick, so you'll get a slight bit of warping, but you can kind of... Uh, Fix that if you want by spritzing the page on the back and closing the book, letting it dry, or using a heat tool and kind of lightly pulling on the paper as you do, kind of stretching it back into place. But I thought it was great, and it's a really great little size. I love journals, and I especially love like a hardcover journal, so this is really cute. Uh, the Faber Castell Gold Faber Aqua Dual Markers. There's a lot of non English names for things this month or this season. <laughs> I've been really struggling to read off the menu. So bear with me. Sorry to everyone whose uh, native tongue I am butchering here. The Candy Shop set of six. It's a new product. Watercolor markers are essential for on the go art making. Couldn't agree more. Faber Castell Gold Faber Aqua Dual Markers offer smooth color laydown when used wet or dry. They're fully water soluble and will not bleed through your paper. You'll find two different nibs on each marker, a flexible brush nib and a fine point hard felt nib. My kind of rule of thumb is the longer softer the bristles on a brush pen, the harder it is to gain control of. Not necessarily the harder it is to use because if you're just coloring in it's actually quite great um but this is great this is a product i don't see too often where there is a brush it's a dual ended pen but usually it's a brush tip and a you know a, a bullet tip a brush tip and a chisel tip a brush tip and a pen you know a fine pen point this is kind of the first time i think i've ever seen a brush tip and then a smaller harder brush tip which i really like i do love a small hard tipped brush pen i think it's just really really great for the lettering kind of stuff that I do in my journaling from time to time and uh, it's, it's great for fine details and, and if it, it really helps I think 
sometimes we get a little intimidated by the bigger brush tips because it just feels like too much to control. So I really, really, really enjoy those. And the color was just gorgeous. Super brilliant, super vibrant. When you put it down on the paper and uh, re-wet it, all of those kind of dye-based watercolor type things, especially that Dr. PH Martens as well, uh, they tend to keep a lot of vibrance once you've watered them down, more so than a regular watercolor. So your dye-based watercolors tend to be a lot more uh, saturated. You can see on the left versus the right there from those swatches. Speaking of the Dr. PH Martins, I'm curious to know if this is a real doctor. <laughs> Experience, he might be like Dr. Pepper, might be a cousin. Experience bottled brilliance with Dr. PH Martins radiant concentrated watercolor. Produced in an extremely concentrated form, this transparent dye-based watercolor can be used directly from the bottle or diluted with water. It'll lay down beautifully in your new Hannah Muller sketchbook. I thought it did lay down really, really well. Really strong, vibrant color. When you use those straight out of the bottle, they almost look black. Like, it, and they, they are super, super, super concentrated. Uh, so they water out really beautifully as well. And the more you water them out, the more you get a lot of modeling with the different types of colors that make up that specific 53D iris blue. So that was really, really fun. You'll see that in my finished piece. I kind of water it down in parts and it's a, it's a really gorgeous color. I love that one. The staff favorite, the Faber-Castell Albrecht Dürer, see here we go again, <laughs> all this German, I can't get my tongue around it, Albrecht Dürer watercolor pencils, there we go, to round out your, is it German? Dutch, I think it's German. To round out your travel watercolor kit, enjoy this set of Faber-Castell watercolor pencils. There you go, I skipped it. <laughs> These pencils contain the highest quality pigments of unsurpassed light fastness and brilliance. They can be easily blended when wet, but are permanent once dry, achieve rich watercolor effects with the thick, fully water-soluble lead. And I always think it's fun to kind of saturate your page and then draw on top of them because they kind of act like really smooth, buttery, you know, kind of soft pastels that way. I just really like that. Just try it a few times with your watercolor pencils. It's always a fun uh, little task, but just be careful because if you are doing a lot of, uh, you know, kind of dry effects with the pencils and then you've accidentally got a wet piece of paper, once you go over it, it's just gonna pull all of that pigment out and it's kind of impossible to undo it at that point. So just be careful. That was kind of the thing I was laughing at in my little test. I accidentally ran the pencil across the nose where it was still wet, just made a whole mess, so. You win some, you lose some <laughs> in art, don't you? Uh, Treckle Mids, this is new to Art Snacks. Bring your paintings to life with the Treckle Mids Desert Blaze. This premium brush is carefully crafted with synthetic bristles to deliver exceptional control and versatility. Whether you're working with watercolor, acrylic, or oil, it provides precise brushwork and consistent results. It is a little snappy brush. I kind of, I liked it. it, had a good hand feel to it. Uh, worked well for this size, the round size four. I am a bit of a snob. Uh, when it comes to the, no, no, I shouldn't say that. I, I, I mostly enjoy a round brush, so I can never really have enough because I'm very heavy handed and I kind of ruin a lot of them. Uh, but I can tell this, this, this will endure <laughs> for, for how long, who knows? I'm very, very heavy handed. Um, but I'm really excited to add that to my little pot of paint brushes over there. It's always great to have kind of a medium sized round brush, super handy. The Derwent Paint Pen. What do you get when you combine a fine liner with a paint pen? This innovative tool from Derwent. What is, why am I saying it like that? <laughs> what is soluble when wet? I'm living my QVC fantasy. What is soluble when wet, but permanent once dry, you can, can create a variety of unique effects with this pen. The opaque pigment flows from a fine 0.5 millimeter tip and offers immense depth of color, even on dark paper. That is one of the Kind of selling points of a paint pen, I have to say, using it on a surface that is a little less than conventional, um, but also in mixed media work, super great to be able to layer over pencils, markers, kind of anything, because it's paint. So it'll kind of sit on there as long as you can get that ink flowing. Just remember not to bash it on the table as you're uh, priming the pens. You just want to softly press them to the paper and pump them a few times and let that paint or the ink flow through. So that is everything from the Art Snacks menu. Hope you enjoyed that extra information. I'm going to take one breath and come back and let you know what I'm doing for the Art Snacks challenge. It's cold so you've been watching. I decided to draw this little fairy and it's fully directly inspired by the reference that I was flipping earlier on screen. That book is actually 
very, very sentimental to me and I got very swept up in the sentiment of it being the holidays and, you know, close to Christmas and all of my sweet, precious Christmas memories that I have, especially being so far away from home, Australia, uh, and, you know, thinking about family and, and how life goes on and, you know, just I'm, I've been very introspective about it, to be honest, and I think art kind of does that to people. I think it really throws you into your own memories and thoughts sometimes. It's a very quiet, meditative practice for a lot of us. And I think, you know, a lot of us pull from very real places, even when it's seemingly nothing very highbrow. I mean, the fairies and mermaids I do, I wouldn't ever submit to a gallery for any reason. <laughs> I consider myself a very proud, lowbrow artist, um, but I have a great time doing it, and I think that's important. The book that I was flipping is my gran's coloring book, and my gran is in heaven now, and I have the most fond memories of Christmas time with her. I lived with my gran and my, my aunt and my mum for like literally my whole, uh, you know, growing up, my childhood, my teenage years. Uh, it was just a, a really fun family dynamic that we had, and uh, my gran did so many creative things with me. She was a champion of all things creative and all of the outlets that I would uh, kind of use to express that creativity, whether it was photography or fashion design or like sewing. She taught me how to sew and dance especially. She was a, a big supporter of my dancing and what I wanted to do and uh, you know, art. And she was just a really big champion of anything that her grandchildren wanted to do really. So I have some of the most fond memories around Christmas time, especially uh, because she was such a vibrant part of the Christmas experience and really, really loved the holidays. Um, but you know, every summer we would go to a, a little beach town resort that my family had been going to for about four generations. And we would just sit and color and we would color in. And this was way before the big boom of adult coloring books and, you know, Zentangling and all of that great stuff that brought so much new product and variety to the market. This was back in the day where really the only books that I was interested in were fairies and mermaids. And there was practically two fairy coloring books you could get that had good paper, I should preface that. I just wanted the good paper ones. <laughs> so my gran and I had these fairy coloring books and we would color them over and over and over again, the same ones. There was one that uh, I flipped on screen for you earlier. And then there was another one that was kind of the same fairies, but they just put alphabet letters with them. So it was almost like the same book anyway. Uh, but I loved it. I couldn't get enough of it. We would just spend hours and hours coloring together. And this is not just through childhood. I mean, I was well into my 20s and we were still doing this. So it is one of my most treasured Christmas time memories. If you don't know, Australian Christmas is in the dead of summer, like super duper hot. So going to a nice beach resort town uh, was, it, it was not as crazy as you might think for around Christmas time for Australians. And it was just a really, really peaceful way to spend time. And I, I just really loved that about my gran. And yeah, I mean, I can't say more than that. It was just one of my most precious memories. So I've been lately diving into this book. I, I brought it back with me when I went to Australia in uh, September. I brought a few things back just so I could keep them here. And, and you know, kind of, I'm very sentimental. I like to look through things. I like to have things close to me that are special. And I thought this one was a really important one to have. So I brought the book over with me and I've been using it and letting it inspire some new work uh, that directly references the book. And I've been using it, you know, kind of as an inspiration for different parts of the image, like kind of using the same style of, you know, fairy wings, or I've been using it to, uh, you know, create a new piece based on the same pose or the same color story that my gran used to color it all in. She did frustrate me because she never really, well, I said she never really finished her pages. Now I really love it about them because it's very distinct. Um, but yeah, she would rarely do the backgrounds and she would rarely color skin tones. <laughs> so a lot of the time I get really frustrated thinking that she wouldn't do it and one day I'll go back in and do it. I have to a few of them. I've, I've used them in my journals before and I've kind of finished them up a little bit, but now it just kind of feels like it's, it has to be, if, for it to be grand, it has to be one of these. She rarely did it. There was some times she would do it, but yeah, it was kind of rare for her. And a lot of them had orange hair, like ginger hair. She loved redheads. So <laughs> all my cousins are redheads. Uh, well, I think most of them. Anyway, all of these random holiday memories kind of pop up into my head and I feel like, you know, I have this new little journal and I love the journals and the journals that I use for myself all the time kind of store all of my memories and I really love to find the creative ways that will kind of evoke all of these feelings so that when I flip through the journals and when I flip through all these little sketchbooks that I'm not just enjoying the fact that I had a great time, you know, playing with my art supplies, but that I'm also having a really great time revisiting these memories that they kind of conjure up. And so 
And this felt very, very special. This felt very sentimental. Um, I, I put a lot of pressure on myself to do a good job this time because, you know, when it really means something to you, you tend to care a lot more about it. So I am happy with how this turned out. I think using those water techniques and then going back over them with the brush markers just gave it such a punch. All of those really beautiful blended tones just by kind of uh, pooling the water over everything. It just seemed to blend itself together. I really, really love how this came out and I'm more so happy that I could use my grand's coloring to inspire the piece and have a new memory to kind of, again, remind me of some of those really, really precious times that I now get to experience nostalgically every time I take a trip down memory lane. I'll join you for an outro in a minute. There we go, there is the final piece for the Winter 2023 Art Snacks Challenge. I hope you enjoyed watching that video come together and if you would like to join Art Snacks, you can do so using the code JAMES10 for 10% off at checkout. And don't forget to share your work with us in the Mix community and on social media with the hashtag Art Snacks Challenge. We love to see what you come up with. I hope you find some time this very busy holiday season to get creative with your new supplies and do something a little bit sentimental. I'll see you next time. Bye.